Hi guys, uh, my name is John Doran and today we're going to talk about uh, doing game engines or using game engines for development of visual novels. That's right guys, drink. No. Um, but before we get started with the presentation, I want to know a little bit more about you guys. Uh, specifically, I want to know uh, what game engines that you guys feel the most comfortable with. Now, we should be seeing a poll come up on the screen quite soon uh, asking this question. Uh, the one asking about what game engine you're most familiar with. Okay. Uh, we're going to be talking about a lot of game engines, and I have a very limited in terms of the time that I have. So if everyone's used a particular engine, then maybe I won't dive uh, so much into uh, doing it. Okay, so I don't know if you can see the results, but right now 75% are saying RenPy. They're voting pretty quickly. 36% um, is using Unity, 25 using other. Tyranno is the last one, and 8% saying none. Awesome. Okay. Cool. All right. Good so, to know. All right. Uh, so that's great. Um, I also uh, have another question. Uh, I want to know uh, how many VNs have you created before? Are you guys actually actively developing? Uh, have you created something before? Have you created more than something before? All right. So let's see. And I, I agree. Uh, I'm, I'm looking at the, the slides saying that UE4 uh, sounds ridiculous, but it is an amazing engine, and I completely agree with you. Unreal 4 is a great engine. I won't have much time to talk about it today, uh, but I think it's better for larger teams, people that have the ability to have artists uh, that can do that can use the ability of the engine. Uh, cool. But we won't dive into it too much. So how is the result? The result. 50% are working on their first title right now. 30 has not started one yet. 5% um, have released one, and then 14 have released more than once. Perfect. All right. So we've got a good mix of people involved in the development. So uh, with that in mind, I'll try and talk with as much as I can. Uh, so again, as I said earlier, um, my name is John Doran, and I am a technical game designer. Uh, so I am involved with the designs of games as well as diving into technical things. Uh, I've worked on indie projects, and I've also worked in the AAA uh, industry as well. Uh, Previously, I worked at LucasArts, working on Star Wars 1313. Now, in addition uh, to programming, or in addition to working on games, I've also written eight books on the development of game titles using game engines uh, for using Unity as well as Unreal. Uh, <laughs> And so, uh, in, in terms of visual novels themselves, that's right, guys. Um, I've worked on a number of different titles uh, in terms of visual novels as well. Uh, and uh, this was, I worked at LucasArts before it was purchased by Disney. Uh, so uh, I don't know much about that. So uh, one question that I often see on forums as well as everywhere else is people asking, what engine should I use for my VN? It's J.O. Doran, actually, for my Twitter. Um, but when deciding what game engine you want to use, there's two typical routes that you could go. Uh, you could have uh, a narrative-focused engine, uh, such as uh, you know, Twine, Cloud Novel, Tyranno Builder, or RenPy. Or you can use a traditional uh, game engine such as Game Maker and Unity. Now, there are many other engines that are available as well or will be available. I will not be talking about engines that are currently in development, such as VN Maker, um, or engines that haven't been updated in a long time, such as Novelty and Flash. Now, that being said, there's a ton of other engines out there as well. And uh, I don't have much time to talk about them, but if you are interested, I can talk more about them through questions or whenever. So 
for each of the game engines that we're going to be discussing, uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give a little introduction to the engine itself. I'm going to talk a little bit about how it works. I'm going to dive into some pros in using it, and I'm also going to dive into the cons of using it. Uh, so unless there are any questions right now, uh, we'll dive on in. So the first game engine that I want to talk about is Twine. And it's got an interesting logo, uh, but it's been used uh, for a number of interesting titles. Uh, I think that uh, Depression Quest, which you can see here uh, once the screen updates, is probably the most popular. Uh, but it's a very, very nice for use for writers or people that like to write. The interface, uh, as you can see here, uh, is very visual. You can see uh, different areas that you have in your script and you can see how it's connected in a visual manner. Each of these boxes contains a area where you can put in a script, where you can type in the script or whatever, whatever you want to do. And whenever you want to go from one section or jump from one side to the other, all you need to do is write something like the section here that I've highlighted. Uh, the left hand side is what you want the text to display. There's an arrow and then you say where you want it to go in the story and it'll dive right into there and it's often used as a great uh, for a writing tool. Now uh, Previously, the last project that we saw looked more like a web page, but you can do some complex and interesting stuff inside of Twine as well. Like for instance here, uh, this game is Azathoth Wakes, which is being worked on currently by Anima Chambers, and I think it's a really good representation of what could be done if you wanted to take the time to dive into it. Now, advantages of working with Twine is the fact that it's completely free for you to use. Um, it has a simple interface, and yes, it is in Twine. It has a simple interface, and it's visual for you to see. It's easy for you to be able to see the story flow itself, and your project can export as HTML. Now, again, this isn't necessarily done by the engine by itself, but I'm showing what's possible in the engine. Uh, in addition, you may want to do something other than just a story-based game. Like, for instance, here I have an example of an RPG game that's done in Twine as well, where you can select who you attack, et cetera, et cetera. And this was created by Guy231. And I'll, be, uh, I'll have the links to all these projects should you wish to play them uh, later on. Uh, but there are some cons in terms of working with Twine as well. Uh, for instance, you in Twine 2, uh, you can't embed your multimedia. Um, and if you want to have sounds, art, etc., you have to bring it in, and it can't be in the exported version of your game. You need to download it. There are also missing menus and options that you may come to expect from a visual novel. Uh, you can play sounds, but by default, there's no way to turn the sounds off or to increase uh, your volume. But the most, uh, or the most, uh, problemsome is that by default Twine doesn't look like a VN. It looks like a web page. Now I put a star there because there are themes available that can give you a VN appearance. And if you actually know how to use CSS as well as programming, you do have the ability to make those impressive looking things like I showed you earlier. But with that in mind, uh, some things to consider. And I think Twine is a great thing to use if you are a writer, but I'll talk more about that later. Moving on to our second project that we're going to talk about today, uh, we're diving into Tyranno Builder. Now, uh, Karen, I'm sure that you have a lot of experience dealing with it as well. Uh, the first game uh, we have, I believe, is done in, in Tyranno Builder is Panzer Madels. Um the engine itself is very intuitive. Um, as you can see, we have a center section, and that's where your script itself is. You will drag and drop 
uh, aspects into the image itself and uh, build build things that you can uh, take a look at and try it. Now, um, this is a very simple example, but other things can be done in the engine as well. Uh, like, for example, the sample project, uh, which you can see here, and it's a little hard to see due to uh, how the latency issues are, uh, but the fact the, that Tyranno Builder gives you the ability to have animated sprites. Specifically, it has Live 2D, uh, which is an animation system that you can use um, that's included in support in the engine itself. It also has a visual editor in which you can work with things without actually knowing how to script things. So if you're scared of coding, this is something that you can do. Uh, it also allows you to export your game to Windows, Mac, the web, and mobile. And so uh, there are definitely primes to use it, um, but there are some potential pro uh, cons. Uh, now, I don't necessarily consider it a con, but you may consider a con that you have to pay in order to use it. That being said, it's $15. I don't think it's necessarily a terrible thing. Uh, but one of the main things is that it's missing a lot of options that we typically take for granted as wanting to have inside of our visual novel projects. And uh, I hear there's also some bugginess that you can see in the project. Um, also, uh, there's currently no Linux support. They say it's coming, but it's been a while. I'm saying uh, it's not there yet. Now. Um, as you can see, Impulse is an example of a game that was made uh, in there as well. Now, because of time, I'm going to skip Cloud Novel, and we're going to dive straight into RenPy. Now, RenPy, uh, favorites for many of you guys here. Uh, it's been used for many different titles, uh, many of them which are quite awesome, including, of course, Analog Hate Story, which was one of my first RenPy games and still one of my uh, favorite titles using the engine. Now, RenPy, unlike uh, the other engines that I showed, is text. Uh, you will have to write uh, text in order to create your project. And this is actually uh, the original script from Kalina when we made the first version. And yes, uh, digital was made inside of RenPy as well. Um, so as you can see, there's text involved. And it may look scary to people that haven't worked with it before. But as you can see, if you look at it, it's not that difficult to parse. Um, when you're creating a script, your left-hand side could be the name of your character that you wish to have type, And the right-hand side being the script that you want it to say. Uh, when you want to uh, do things, like moving things on the screen, uh, you can just say, I want to show this person at this area, and this is how I want it to be drawn. Uh, and you can drop in and out adding code when you want to. Like, for example, when I make a choice through a menu, I can change it so that my stats adjust. Uh, some really cool stuff. Now, in addition to just creating a VN, uh, you're, you can also create very complex titles. Like, for instance, Winter Wolves created uh, Seasons of the Wolf, which, again, very awesome, very cool when working with stuff. And another thing is, unlike all these other engines, uh, it is open source. Uh, it's free to use. It's open source. So if there's a problem with the code, and again, I think RenPy is very stable, it's great for you to uh, be able to make changes, to commit changes, uh, and enable you to uh, build the project the way that you want to customize it. It also has great documentation. The engine's been around for a while, uh, has a lot of ways for you to find out what stuff is going on. And if you're an artist, there's lots of nice features that RenPy has, such as the live composite and image maps, which make my life so much easier. And you'll definitely miss if you're working in other engines. And I would also say that RenPy also has great debugging tools. So if you're 
if you're having problems in your project, it's great there as well. And of course, the large community. You guys already know uh, there's a large community working with. Now, that being said, there are some cons to working with uh, RenPy as well. Um, you know, uh, there is no what you see is what you get editor. You must write programming. Uh, again, there are some things like you can use the control D tools uh, in order to move things around, see what the properties are. And by the way, yes, One Night Stand, one of my newest favorite games uh, that uh, I really think is great. And again, uh, congratulations on getting the IGF finalist for excellence in narrative. Uh, continuing from there, uh, you also cannot export to the web. Oh darn. So if you want your game on, on the web, not necessarily as you can get. And currently, no live 2D support. But who knows? Wait a couple weeks. Maybe you have to announce that next time. Uh, so um, not too bad cons. I definitely think it's a great thing to look into. Uh, so again, uh, the next engine I want to talk about is Game Maker. And uh, Game Maker, I want, I'm not talking about Game Maker Studio, but Game Maker uh, is the engine that powers Cinders, uh, which you guys probably may know already, uh, but is done by Moa Cube. And uh, I, I wanted to bring this up because if you are a game developer and you have experience working with a particular engine, uh, there are advantages to using the knowledge that you know. Um, obviously, it can be more time consuming because you have to build things up yourself. But as you can see, very visually impressive for you to be able to create something inside Game Maker. And I think that Cinders is uh, really nice. Uh, and so you can do something like that through there. Now, uh, lastly, again, I've got five minutes, so lots of stuff to talk about. Let's talk about Unity. So uh, Unity is another good engine to work with for visual novel development, and it gives you the ability to do things that other engines don't have the capability of. Like, for example, Angels and Demigods here by Seven Keys Studio gives you, is actually a VR-based visual novel, in which case you can look around, use the Oculus Rift. Um, that's not there necessarily. Um, so we talked about innovation earlier. That's the first steps towards it. You also have really awesome games here like Wispire's Herald, which is coming out soon. Uh, this game uses 3D graphics, which other engines don't necessarily have access to and the character this game is using live 2d for their character art uh, so you have a vn you have 3d it really looks nice and it's really great for designers as well as programmers uh, like for instance i said before being multi-platform is quite useful unity is the multi-platform of multi-platform at this time, there's 30 different platforms that Unity supports. It's the only engine that I'm talking about today that supports console development. So if that's something that you wish to do, it's something to consider, as well as VR stuff. It has a visual editor. So if you're someone that's artistic and you want to be able to modify things and see exactly what things are going to look like. It's something worth considering. Uh, there's great documentation because there are people whose full-time job is writing documentation for this engine. Uh, and of course, there's awesome books all about working with Unity as well. That's a plug for me. Um, there's also the Asset Store, which Unity has. Um, if you don't know how to do something, uh, for your uh, project, the asset store typically has uh, things that you can input into your project. Now, of course, uh, it, you usually need to know how to program to hook these things in, but it can definitely be a good uh, time save. And there's also uh, frameworks out there for creating visual novels, such as Fungus and other ones as well, uh, which can be useful. And finally, I do want to mention 
there are job prospects in terms of creating things in Unity. If you want to get a job in the traditional game industry, uh, having Unity on your resume can be quite a useful thing. Um, and uh, with that, that's not to say that there aren't disadvantages to using Unity as well. Um, now, you will be hearing more about creating visual novels with Unity later on, uh, as Tin Man Games will be here talking about their Miss Fisher game. Uh, now, the cons for working with Unity is the fact that, uh, depending on what you're trying to do, it can cost a lot of money. Um, depending on what you're trying to do. And if you're so unfortunate that you make $100,000 a year, you will uh, have to buy Unity. I know, it's so sad. Um, but the main problem to working with Unity is the fact that it's closed source. A lot of time when you're building things inside of Unity, you need to uh, work around issues that Unity may have. There are bugs bugs that sometimes aren't updated, and so you need to adjust your game to work with it. Um, so it's kind of a black box. And also I would say of the things that I've talked about today, it probably has the highest learning curve. Uh, you must uh, learn how the engine itself works. You must be able to code to create things inside of there. And there's also the fact that you must program. Uh, again, there are frameworks that you can use, but that's not something that will necessarily happen. Uh, one more thing I want to mention, it is possible for you to create your own engine itself. Like for instance, what uh, uh, Millen and his teams did for the Invisible Apartment series. Uh, they did a lot of cool stuff, um, and I highly suggest you check them out. Uh, but uh, because they made the engine themselves, they know the entire thing. And if they want to make changes, it's easy to do so. Um, now again, we don't have much time, but you might be wondering, what engine should I use for my VN? Well, uh, if you're yourself a pure writer, I highly suggest looking into Twine or to RenPy. Uh, Twine is great because you get to visually see what happens. RenPy is great because uh, you can actually work with your script. Um, your .rpy file is a text file, and uh, when you make modifications to your text file, you can see things. Now, I'll be completely honest. Uh, whenever I wor when I was working on Kalina and I found typos in my script, I used the RenPy script to find, hey, this is where uh, the problem is, and then go into Unity to make the changes. If you're an artist, if you don't want to dive into code at all, use Tyranno Builder. If you have no choice, or sorry, if you if you can stand some code, use RenPy. It's amazing. It has a lot of things inside there for you. Unity is great if you want to push the boundaries, have really cool particle effects, or dive into 3D. Now, if you're a team, I highly suggest that you dive into using RenPy or using Unity uh, for mostly the same reason. Plus, uh, when working in a team with multiple people, having the ability to do version control, which I'll talk more uh, or I would talk more later on about, um, has a lot of things that makes your life a lot easier. So I highly suggest using these two engines because they give you the ability to do it. Now, for Kalina itself, we decided to use Unity for Kalina Hands in the Kitchen. There were a number of reasons why we did this. We wanted access to features that, that uh, other engines didn't have, uh, like shader, like specific shaders that we wanted to use. We love the ability to use Visual Studio, uh, and we wanted to make our own preparatory animation engine. As you can see, Katie there is moving, and she can change her animations on the fly. She also accepts working with lightings and complex particle effects. That's something that we couldn't get anywhere else, so we went into building it. We also wanted to support having a ton of characters on the screen at once uh, for when you're building things, and there were slowdowns in other engines for diving into it. And there we go. That's everything that I want to say for right now. I want to thank you guys so much for listening to me babble so much in the past bit. Um, if we have any time, I'll take some questions. And if you want to know a bit more about me, you can follow me on Twitter uh, at jodoran or my website, jompydoran.com. Thank you, guys. Awesome. And so now we are heading into Q&A, and we have a break after this. So we have about a 15-minute period where we can just relax and talk about stuff. Yes. Uh, 
at this point, it's like, you know, since it's kind of free talk and questions, it's like we can just monitor the Discord channel. And anyone who wants to talk doesn't have to be just the presenter, can just go for it. Yeah, for sure. Um, for version control, I use specifically SVN. Uh, I find SVN works well enough that people don't have problems learning it too well. Um, uh, because working with RenPy, it's very easy for you to be able to add files. Because they're text files, it's easy to try figure out which one that you're that you're working with. Now with Unity, you can sometimes run into problems with scene files, both people working uh, at the same time. Uh, but as long as one person is working on a time, you usually don't have an issue with it. Um, Perforce, I find, can be useful as well. I use Perforce when I'm dealing with with Unreal projects, uh, but that's mostly because it can be built into the engine itself. Um, I typically like working with with uh, Subversion, though. Um, I, I I still highly suggest RinPy. Uh, it's very stable. Uh, as long as you're trying to do a VN, you're not trying to dive into crazy uh, 3D stuff. I think you can do basically any 2D game or, or sorry, menu heavy or UI heavy uh, VN or 2D game could definitely be used there. And yes, Unity does have Unity Collab now, but it's in a beta stage. And I've had some people run into some uh, problems with it. So I don't necessarily trust just Unity Collab. Uh, let me see if there was another question. Da, 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 da. Um, yeah, so RimPy can be used for turn-based fighting, like I showed before. How long does it take to learn Unity for a VN? Well, that depends if you buy my book or not. No, I'm playing. Um, uh, so, um, for learning Unity, it depends on what you're trying to do. If you're just trying to use... <laughs> if you're just trying to use VN features itself, uh, I find Fungus can be useful. Um, there are some advantages and disadvantages to using it as well. Uh, like there's not a save system built into it. I had to program to build it. Um, <laughs> and yes, I am on the drinking game. That's why I'm. Uh, that's why I'm. <laughs> I'm causing it to happen. Um, okay, how the Tal Kalina team came together. Uh, the game itself was uh, based off of me um, as I wanted to have as I wanted to have things added to the project I hired additional people um, basically the idea came the basic idea came to me um, but I hired a writer to work on the first script and then dived into uh, adding artists and other things as the the need arised uh, blah blah blah. Would I remember? Okay, um, Unity. If you're working professionally, C Sharp is the way to wow. go. Just like was. I'm sorry. No, look, 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 look. They are not shutting any service down. What are you talking about? <laughs> okay. Oh fuck! I was just. You said. You said. You said it's so fucking serious for a moment. Holy shit. <laughs> okay. Um. But yeah, with Unity, I would highly suggest using C Sharp, especially if you want to do industry stuff. Um, it's great that they have the ability to use Unity Script, which is basically JavaScript. So if you're someone that's been using Flash, it's an easy way to transition. Um, I have a whole list of books that I recommend for developers. Um, I'll send a link to you uh, later on um, with a whole list of things that I recommend for developers. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Okay, I think that's everything. So unless yeah. there are other questions, <laughs> I don't know. I think we're okay. Um, all right, um, we do have a short break. Uh, we will be back at one with Visual Novel Developer at Unity 3D. Uh, but now's a good chance, you know, grab a drink, chill out. You can ask some questions in the chat, and just you know, whoever has an answer, just pipe up and answer it. Um, yeah, and this drinking game thing, try not to kill yourselves. <laughs> uh, uh, John, I, I, I'm spamming in the chat. <laughs> I'm being ignored. Uh, books, do you have any book recommendations? Yes, I, I said I do. Um, there's actually a list on my website of books that I recommend. I'm trying to find the link now. Awesome, thanks.
in terms of books, it also depends on what you're trying to learn. Are you trying to learn about the industry? Are you trying to learn about specific engines? Are you trying to learn about game development in general? I want to learn about what you like to read. I like to read Gama Sutra. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> um, there are lots. Uh, I'm, I'm having problems finding the link right now. It's been a while since I've uh, uh, looked, looked at it. Um, but in terms of books in the industry in general, um, I highly, I highly recommend. Uh, there is a book um, by uh, Scott Rogers uh, about game development in general called Level Up, uh, which I really like. Uh, oh yeah, I've the read reason I'm that. a great book. Yes, the the nice. The thing is, a lot of his best stuff is already on his website for free. Um, I highly suggest taking a look at, if you're interested in level design at all, um, how how I learned everything about level design from Disney World. Um, and uh, other things like the platformer primer. Other stuff. Now, um, for... Hmm... Give me one. Give me a couple minutes. I'll work up a list for you. Awesome. You were the best.